What's going on boys? Welcome to my wood room. Today we are going to start a new series which is going to be making a glider. We're going to take a raw piece of maple then we're going to turn it into a rough cut shape of a glider. This is my new 8 inch glider that I am um, just starting to produce. I've been testing it for the last six months and it works really well. Then we're going to get it to the rough shape that we want it with the sander router, all that good stuff, hand sanding. And then, finally we're gonna turn it to the finished product, which is the glider, the eight inch body, the eight inch Peterson's Lures whale tail on the back end. So, we're gonna start that today. Um, again, my wood shop is nothing special, but it does the job. Um, me and my pops built all this, all these benches and good stuff and whatnot, so I'll show you guys around a, a bit in a little bit, but, um, we're going to jump right into it and start the cutting. Alright, well I already have my pieces of wood cut into 8 inches long, or actually 8 and a half. Gives me a half inch of room for um, wiggle room in case something goes wrong or I measured wrong or something. It gives me a little bit to play with. So, we take this, I do my gliders I start off with the raw thickness is one and six eighths inch thick um, I start off thick because I like I keep the belly stick and then I bevel the nose and the tail so we're gonna come down here first thing I like to do and again this is just how I do it I don't know that it's necessarily the best way to do everything but I'm just gonna show you how I've learned how to do it and how I do it so first thing I do is I come down here and obviously like you would be measuring anything um, make my marks for one and six eighths inches thick. Take my straight edge. I could use a longer straight edge, as you can see, it doesn't reach the whole way. That's what you want. Um, I'm going to, I'll just use a piece of wood for a straight edge for now. Line it up, mark it nicely, and now we're going to head over to the chop saw to chop my pieces. Or actually, no, I'm lying. My chop saw I don't use for that. My chop saw I use to cut the length for 8 inches. My band saw I use to cut this. If your band saw is set up properly, it cuts like butter. I'll show you guys in a second. Alright, we got our wood marked. Everything set up. So we're going to just chop this into the 1 and 6 inch thick wide piece of board so we can uh, draw our stencil on there to cut the finished product. There we go. We got uh, the rough shape. Obviously, it's not a perfect shape to start with, but um, closer you can get it to the shape that you need of your bait, the better. I used to go real fast with the bandsaw, trying to crank them out, and I waste a lot of blanks. Wasted a lot of blanks that way because, if especially with gliders, the smallest little imperfection can throw it off. The teeniest little about little amount of lead can make a run wrong. Teeniest difference in the thickness and the weight, all that stuff. Even the tail, uh, if you're using a grub tail and you use one more of the, the rolls or whatever you would call it on the back versus one less, it can throw off how the bait works. Um, I've had a lot of gliders that didn't work with this tail and I put this six inch tail on it and it works. So keep that in mind when you're cutting. You want to make sure to get as close as possible, especially because then there's a lot less sanding work to be done. Next we are routing it. My favorite freaking part. Not. It's actually the sketchiest part and my least favorite part of doing gliders, doing 
crankbaits and all that stuff with uh, cedar, I don't mind because it's a softer wood, but maple was really hard and I don't, I like all my fingers, so it sketches me out, but I'll show y'all how I do it. I'm sure there's lots of people who have lots of better ways of doing their routing. I've just learned this way because I feel safest doing it, even if it takes a little more time in the end with sanding and whatnot. So let's get to that. So we got our blank ready to be routed. So we're going to get down here to the routing table. I'm going to get some other angles so you guys can see how I do it. But basically I work every single... So basically I work the router all the way down until I'm about an inch to like half an inch from the end of the bait and then I move it and I flip it because this flat edge on the end here some people know how to continue the route and um, do it properly so they don't catch it but every time I've tried to do it it's caught it and kicked it across the room and scared the crap out of me and thought I was gonna rip my fingers off so I just do it with the sander, that little extra half of an inch isn't worth my finger, so. So if you see what I mean, I have that little bit on the edge here that I leave. The only ones that I feel comfortable going the whole way on, uh, down on are the two, this one and this one. It's just the other ones don't feel comfortable and I want to keep my fingers. So that's how it looks after routed and rough. Being such a thick bait, I'm sure I could get a, diff a better bit to round it a bit more, but... I do a whole hell of a lot of sanding for the finished product anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. So next we're going to get set up belt sander. I just have a cheap one from Harbor Freight. I like it because I like this little area here that's springy. It's not like a hard all the time. I have some playroom so I can round things nicely. So I'm going to get set up and we're going to head into that step next. I got to set up to do the sanding, but I did want to say real quick, although I do think that the shape has something to do with how your bait runs. I think a lot of people put too much thought into the shape. It's more of how you weight it and a lot of other different aspects to it than just the raw shape of the bait. Every bait that I've ever made, I literally came up with the shape on my lunch break of my day job, just winged it. And obviously the work then came from the weighting and the testing and all that good stuff. But as long as it's somewhat of a, like you can look at any other bait, there's a reason why most people's baits are similar and the same shape to a certain extent, because that's what works. So yeah, we're going to get into sanding. We're going to take it from this down to this. Give it a nice finish, nice shape, so we're ready to do eyelets, weighting, and all that good stuff. So let's get to it. All right, now on my sander, I got 120 grit. Not that it has to be that. I've used 80, 100. The 120 is just nice. It takes a tad bit longer than, like, I'd say, like, 180 grit, obviously, but it leaves it with a nice, smooth finish and not a real, like, ground-up, meaty-looking finish, and then I have to go over hand sanding it with 150 or 120 or whatever to make it smooth. This is already smooth after we're done. Oh, and real quick, this is also the messiest part. So I got my Cyclone shop vac wood shop thing hooked up so it can suck all the dust out. So that's gonna be loud, so I won't be able to talk to you while we're doing this, but I'll stop periodically and show you why, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Now first thing I do is I like to get the shape of the bait perfect, the top and the bottom. And then the little marks that are left on the bait, I don't have any with, or yeah I do, I have some dotting rises with them. 
these little marks from me not routing the whole way down. I like to sand those off and try and get a majority of the cutting marks from the bandsaw off of the bait first. And then because my baits, I bevel the head and the tail. As you can see, it's less thick on the head than it is on the tail. Or I mean, I'm sorry, it's less thick in the tail and the head than it is in the middle. So I let's bevel that first and then I go back through and clean everything up. So we're gonna continue and I'll check back with y'all in a minute. Well now that I got the majority of the beveling done for the head and the tail, now I come into the finishing shaping, which is like, the router obviously rounds the edges on this bait pretty nicely, but not to my liking. You could probably epoxy it, and I think a lot of people do, and no one would notice that it's not completely smooth and whatnot, because the epoxy is going to give it a nice smooth finish. But I'm a perfectionist, so I like mine to be perfect before I go to epoxy. So I take it on the, like I said earlier, how it has a little give there. There's not a back plate on that one part. I take it on there and I work it, just going like this on those edges. And it um, gives it a nice smooth finish and rounds it off a whole lot more than the router did. So that's what we're going to do. And then the shape is complete and then it's on to the next part. One hour later. All right, boys. Well, here's the finished product. Just like our other one. Identical in shape and thickness. That whole process, I'd say, right there. Um, not considering all the camera work. Probably, I don't know, for one bait maybe an hour to do that. The sanding is the biggest time consuming thing, but I think it definitely, the finished product speaks for itself in the end. So um, that about wraps it up for this part of the glider build. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want a more detailed video on everything or there's some things you guys wanna know, just let me know in the comments down below. I'm trying the best I can, but I, I know I do miss some things that are probably pertinent information to what I'm doing. So let me know if I miss anything. If you enjoyed it, please slap that like button, share the video, subscribe if you're not already, and stay tuned. I got a setting up my airbrush, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way, as well as the uh, gill video and crackle, how I do crackle, because I have some techniques that nobody else really uses that I've used. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Peace. Oh, and if you guys don't subscribe and like this video, You'll be cursed with eight months with no fish. Subscribe, like it, stay tuned. See you boys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.